Welcome, everyone. We are so honored to have with us Rob Brown, who is the leader of the Inland Valley chapter of the Citizens Climate Lobby. I'm sure most of you have heard of the Citizens Climate Lobby, which is an organization working to create bipartisan solutions to climate change. And so it is an incredible honor to have Rob with us. Before he comes up, someone from our board of arts and education, Ann Olander, who's been instrumental in communicating with Rob is gonna give a quick introduction. And so here at Claremont United Church of Christ, we are a creation justice church, which means a few different things, but one of which is we have committed to considering how any decision we make as a congregation in our church council or in our congregational meetings impacts the environment. And so that's always supposed to be part of our discussions. And so that is one way in which we live out that commitment. And so this is an important topic for all of us to engage in. And so thank you, Anne, for helping us coordinate this. I wanna invite you up to do a second quick introduction and then we'll hear from Rob. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for coming and thank you for saying that you would come. I wanna tell you, Farley and I have known Rob and his wife Sue for many years, I don't know, 15 or 20 perhaps, through Sierra Club in the beginning. And I want you to know when I talked to Rob about coming to this meeting, he couldn't talk too long because he had to go plant a tree. He <laughs> belongs to Pomona Green, I believe, who were planting trees that day. And so this is just a part of his life. Uh, about 10 years ago, I believe, our uh, Claremont Church uh, has a sustainability committee and they work with the Earth Day mm -hmm. group, which is Claremont Sustainability. And uh, Tom Hellowell was organizing our church's activity. And we had lots of tables here over in Claremont. And he was the one who figured out that we needed somebody to help haul all these tables back to our church basement. And he spent a good hour or more bringing things to our basement. So he has many associations with us and with the earth. And I'm so glad that you're all here today. I know a lot of you, most of you, and thank you very much for coming. And Rob, dear one, thank you so much for giving your time to tell us more about what you do. And I wanna tell you, he's a really great lobbyist too. Um, I happened to stand behind him when we went to a town hall meeting of our then at the time, uh, Representative Tom Aguilar, Pete Aguilar. He's really good and he's just really nice and effective too. Thank you, Rob. Well. <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. I don't normally get that kind of introduction in the morning, so this is a this is a, as good as a cup of coffee, I would think. So, uh, so, uh, so, um, so, let me just say, I, I, I don't want this is. I'd like to have fun with this conversation. This is not going to be a dreary. Uh, the world is going to hell. Part, pardon the expression. Um, uh, uh, discussion is hopeful, upbeat, optimistic. Uh, we will have to take a side trip into, into disasters briefly, but um, mostly upbeat. Um, if I may just get a time check, when, how long, when do we end? Um, it's good to wrap up at least by 9.55. 9.55, okay. My goal is to talk about 30 minutes and then Q&A. A lot of Q&A, um, you know, a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you is, you know, uh, you, you, you could find just as good material probably better on the internet. Uh, so uh, my goal today is uh, to not so much to inform you, but to inspire you to action. If, if, that's, if that's your interest, if you're already, what we find is there's a large group of people that are um, alarmed about the climate, but they don't know what to do about it. So they're, they're maybe over-informed, uh, over-worried uh, and, 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 and at a dead end. So our, our you know, to me, the high value would be if you're interested to, to inspire you to action and that we're just here to help. We, we, are, we specialize in action and um, I'm a member of a number of groups, Sierra Club, other groups, but CCL uh, is focused on action. And uh, so there you go, at, at your service. So here's my contact information. I'll bring it up at the end as well. And uh, hello, people online. Uh, sorry, I, I don't do too many hybrid uh, presentations. So good morning to you as well. Three main points. 
I've got about 18 slides. Uh, I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. If you've got questions, make a note and, and just we'll do it, do it in Q and A. Three main points. Uh, the first one, I've borrowed this from Catherine Hayhoe. You may not know, she's a evangelical Christian. Uh, you, you know her, uh, a great spokesman person for the climate. And uh, she has like these three, three or four points. Uh, climate change is real, uh, it's serious. Yeah, she says, it's us, I put human cause, and it's solvable, potentially solvable. We could do the whole talk on this one uh, point, uh, we won't. A second main point, engage citizen teams, lobbying for effective policies and promoting their implementation. Uh, and, the, and the third point, uh, have fun saving the world with friends. Um, we're all volunteers here, nobody's paid in this organization. There are no shortage of paid lobbyists, you, you may know that we're, we're, we're volunteers. One of our strengths, when we come back, go back to Washington on our own dime, it makes quite an impression on the Congress people versus somebody coming in, making a half a million dollars a year, may not care about the topic at all. They're in for the money uh, when we show up and we're voters, by the way, um, it, it makes quite an impression. Uh, uh, before that, uh, briefly, my story, I, I've been involved in, uh, who doesn't like the outdoors, right? I, you know, so I, I, it, so it's just a natural progression into, you know, you see the outdoors being uh, at risk uh, um, or just needs our help. Uh, and um, so I've been involved for quite a while, but I got, uh, I was invited by Penelope Mann, member of your congregation to, to, uh, to join about eight years ago. And uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun and, um, uh, well, I don't want to go on about me. I'll just say I joined because of their emphasis on action. Uh, again, member of a number of groups, but if you want to take action, we have a lot of avenues where you can act. And, uh, and that's why I joined and, and I've been able to, I, I've, I've been in dozens of lobbying me meetings with your representatives, federal representatives, state representatives. Uh, I never would have done one of those without being part of this. You know, you can just do things as a team. Uh, the, <clears throat> that you would not do um, as a, uh, excuse me, that you would not do as an individual. That's why I joined. So that's my story. Okay, briefly to the climate. I was just reading this article yesterday. Another person, if you don't know him, Bill McKibben um, is, is also a giant in the climate movement, 350.org. Uh, I just read his recent article yesterday. He, he went, so these are right out of his article. Um, uh, this is my one slide on climate damage. I'm assuming, are people mostly familiar with the climate issue uh, that there's climate damage going on? I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. We can come back to it in Q and A. You can reach out to me at any point on, on any issue. But from his story yesterday, uh, a Fort Lauderdale rainstorm dropping 25 inches of rain in seven hours. The previous record for all of April was 19 inches. So in seven hours, they got more than their record for a whole month. Let me say this is personal because my wife, Susan, and I are going to be in Fort Lauderdale this coming Thursday, Thursday and we're going to be at an Earth Day event next weekend in Fort Lauderdale. So we're hoping that, we're hoping that uh, it, it drains. Uh, the pictures were very scary. And uh, I got four bullet points on disasters. These are right out of his article from yesterday. Last, if you remember about a year, year before last up in the Northwest Canada, 121 degrees in, in Canada, that's Death Valley class temperatures. Thousands of people died in that event. People don't remember that from, from heat. They don't have air conditioning up there. Uh, they, it, it, plus uh, much wildlife per perished, much marine wildlife perished. How about this one? Chinese weather stations recorded all 30, 30 of their hottest days in history last summer. 30, the top 30 last summer. And, and finally, parts of Pakistan, 700% of annual rainfall in one month last autumn. That's seven times 12 months. I make that to be 84, 8,400% of a normal one in, in one month. That, that's a lot. Um, so uh, one of the points of this is people tend to think of uh, climate change as hitting us. I don't know, the glaciers are gonna melt. I don't know, decades from now, it's bad, but not today. These things are pretty current. Uh, things are happening now. This is not a, a problem for the future. 
it's likely to still be a problem in the future and a worse problem. So, but it's, it's, it's already upon us. That's it for gloom and doom. Uh, here's a quote that uh, someone else put in the, this presentation, but uh, I like, half the misery in the world comes of want of courage to speak and to hear the truth plainly and in a spirit of love. And um, so uh, this is really what, uh, what CCL does. We, we um, speak and listen. Um, it, it speaks for itself. The one thing I'll pull out is courage. It's a lot easier to have courage with a team. Now, I know when I went in my first lobbying, you're meeting your congressperson, oh my God, what am I gonna say? But being with a team of people who've been there before, everybody has a role, you're the timekeeper, uh, you ask a question, um, it, it just flows. And after you've done a couple, it just becomes, it just becomes very comfortable. More comfortable than this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but cur courage with being with a group. Okay, here's the bread and butter of what, what Citizens Climate Lobby does. Um, again, there's much I could talk about on the climate issue. 30 minutes is not a lot of time. I'm going to emphasize areas where if you had an interest in taking action, here's some of the things we do. Keep an eye out for something that you might find that could work for you. We have a hundred different ways you can plug in. Um, we don't assign people, people darn assigned tasks. You do what you enjoy or, or you can't fool people. They're volunteers. If they don't enjoy it, they won't do it. Even if they pretend to do it, they won't do it. You find something that you enjoy. Um, really, our main thing, I'll come back to it, is lobbying Congress. We go back to DC a couple times a year. We meet them in their local offices. We meet either with the Congress people or we meet with their staff. And meeting with staff is actually very productive. Excuse me. It turns out uh, political uh, electees get unelected and they're gone, but their staff tends to persist. They may either work with the new person or they uh, move on to another office. So quite often you can have more productive um, meetings with staff. And one of my favorite meetings was the, 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 the congressperson was there and he, he went and left and he had to go for a vote. He got up and he goes out for a vote and he turns back to one of his staff people. He goes, what's my position on this vote? He had to check with the staff person because there's too much back there to do and they rely on their staff too. So if you make an inroad with uh, their legislative assistant or they have, an, they have an environmental staff person, that can often be better than the Congress person who, who, who has many things uh, that, that they don't specialize say on, on environmental issues. But we do media relations. We write letters to the editor. People in this room on our team have written letters to the editor that have been published, LA Times, uh, very nice. You reach thousands of people. We write op-eds. Um, last year, we, uh, the organization wrote 800 op-eds around the country, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, all the big publications, LA Times, op-eds uh, across the country. And, and I'll just say for both letters to the editor, op-eds, other outreach to media, we have templates. Here's an op-ed template. You can just go in. Um, we have a team that watches the local papers for issues that are pertinent to the climate. They send it out to the group. You can take that issue and, and, and massage it into reference that issue, reference that article. One of the tips is if you reference an article that the paper just published, they're more likely to pick up either the letter to the editor or the op-ed because it was their idea. You're just echoing back to them their, their own idea. They like that. Uh, grassroots outreach. This is grassroots outreach. You folks are grassroots. And uh, uh, um, what, what, one of my favorite quotes, and I heard it from Obama, and he said, um, uh, the most important role in, uh, in, in, in a democracy is not the president, you people think is the president. He goes, it's the citizen. Really, it's the citizen is the, is, is the clearly a president with no citizens is uh, the booby prize, right? You, you know, you need, you need Indians, you need, you need not just chiefs. So grassroots outreach, we do grassroots outreach. We do tabling. I helped and all tables and I got invited here off helping them with tabling. We have a little table in the back there that you can check out on the way out. We're going to have a tabling event next week for Earth Day in Claremont, I'll mention it later. And um, it's just a lot of fun. You're meeting, uh, you're meeting, uh, you're meeting people, it's, it's fun. I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, grass, uh, I'll just move through these. Grass Tops Outreach is um, business, large organizations. 
other nonprofits we work with, but uh, we work with petroleum companies, fossil fuel companies, other large hospitals. Uh, climate change has a big health impact. Uh, nurses groups, um, other, other organizations. And much of this is with the thought of, if they get on board, they're, they're kind of um, influencers, large influencers, as important as citizens are. It turns out members of Congress pay quite a bit of attention to, let's say, a manufacturing association in their district. They pay a lot of attention to, to that. And then to the bottom right, group development and organizing. We do a lot of training um, in CCL, videos, audios, slide decks, every bit as good as this. Um, uh, much training. We do a lot of, a lot, you develop as a team, team, team development. A lot of fun. Traveling to Washington, DC. This is um, really our, our bread and butter activity. And I'll just say very quickly how, how CCL got started with a half dozen people. They went back to do, they got spun up on the climate back in the 2000s, 2007, I believe. Um, went to speak with Congress people. And basically what they're told was, you know, we don't hear anything about climate change. Yes, of course, it's important. How could it not be important? But the citizens never, they called their, they can't, their social security check didn't cash. You know, we hear about all this other stuff. We'd never hear about climate. The citizens are just not reaching out. So the citizens climate lobby was specifically formed to, to bring up a groundswell of citizens who are, who are concerned, but are just not voicing it to their representatives. So we organize that voice and present it to the representatives. Just as one example, we at tabling events, we would have people, will, they can write a letter, hi, Congressman, climate change, please do something, blah, blah, Bob, Claremont. And, and we get a stack of those letters. And I can tell you when we go back and lobby people, you're there talking with them, you've got a presentation, but then at some point you hand them this stack of letters, we, we deliver them. They pretend to listen to us after that but they're just paging through the letters and they're going, Hey, look at this, what Joey said. And they, they, you know, they just, it makes quite an impact to see uh, when they hear from the citizens in their district on, on this topic. We go to Washington, DC. Uh, we have an international convention, one coming up in June. Um, we're an international organization uh, of 600 chapters around the world, 44 countries. The numbers are probably larger than that. Uh, over 200,000 members. Um, the United States is an interesting country. Many of the other countries are further along. Uh, we, 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 got in, we, we got into a little bit of a, you know, climate became a political uh, football here, unfortunately. Other countries, they, they, um, they don't play that game and uh, actually can move faster, making big inroads in Africa, uh, many new chapters in Africa. Uh, CCL works on policies that are effective in reducing net emissions and building bridges, both in Congress and our communities. Reducing emissions, that's our, our, our main uh, policy. And here are our uh, four main policies that, that we promote uh, for legislation. The first one is the one we've been working on forever. If you're familiar with it, it's carbon pricing, putting a price on carbon, um, which is very similar to when they decide to uh, reduce smoking, they, they just kick the taxes up from $2 to $8, whatever it was. Thankfully, I didn't smoke. But the idea is putting a price on, on carbon tends to um, reduce, tends to reduce that activity. And the particular uh, proposal that we promote uh, collects this revenue, and, and there's a separate slide I'll come to, but, uh, and then returns it back to the to citizens. So if you reduce your carbon, uh, you, you'll actually, you'll become net positive. You'll get more money back than, than uh, what you might've had to pay extra for carbon intense products. I'll just go through this quickly. I have a separate slide. Healthy forests, building electrification and efficiency, clean energy, uh, permitting and reform. Permitting reform. Okay, carbon. Uh, pricing. We advocate for carbon fee and dividend. The dividend is the money coming back with carbon border adjustment. I'll come back to that to lower emissions, deliver blah, 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 clean energy. Uh, again, uh, I don't want to dwell on this, but this was the main, uh, our main policy for a decade. There was nobody behind it. Uh, we helped uh, Congress spin up a, a bipartisan climate uh, 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 committee 
uh, very effective. Had I think approximately 100 members when it uh, when it uh, ended, and it was a so-called uh, Noah's Ark plan. They didn't want to be, you know, 90 Democrats and uh, a few disgruntled Republicans. It was 50-50. If one Democrat came in, they had to bring in a Republican. So, so if it got to 100, there were 50 Democrats, 50 Republicans, which was 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 very constructive. But we went from that, and then we had bills, and then last summer they passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which is the largest climate act in history. Um, pretty good, not perfect, but but good enough, uh, better than nothing, better for going from no bill to getting a few people to say, well, we should think about this, co-sponsoring a number of bills, and then finally last summer passed it, quite a big bill. Uh, the, the carbon fee and dividend missed by one vote, missed by one vote. So we're close. It didn't make it in. We're close. We continue to push this. You can ask me about it later. It's seen by, by economists and scientists as the most efficient way to reduce uh, carbon, the most cost-effective and most efficient way. Uh, it covers, uh, it just goes across the whole market. And I'll just say this, other countries are uh, employing a, a, a price on carbon, the European Union. Uh, and if you see down here, I went past it quickly, the carbon border adjustment mechanism. Think about it, if one country puts a price on carbon, it disadvantages that company relative to other countries, that country relative to other countries. So the way they would protect themselves, the way Europe will protect itself is, we, other countries coming in will have to pay that fee. So we can't, we can't just, if their products become more expensive because they have instituted a fee and we can't come in and, and uh, undercut the, the domestic industry uh, with a lower, because we don't, we just pollute free for nothing here, our products are cheaper and we ship them into their country. Um, the, the, the border adjustment says, yeah, not so fast. Our people have to pay this fee, you have to pay it too. And oh, by the way, we'll be paying France that fee instead of collecting it locally here. Uh, this is actually quite popular with Republicans and conservatives. The idea that a, a, uh, if other countries, China and Russia and other countries are now also instituting carbon fees so that they will not be disadvantaged when the EU uh, spins up their fee. So it's a, it's a complicated topic, but it's, it's important. Uh, after the IRA, uh, uh, IRA passed, uh, CCL has, has broadened out its scope a bit to cover a few other areas. I'm not going to dwell on them. They're more or less intuitive. Healthy forests, forest, if you probably know, capture a lot of carbon. Uh, they do the work for us as long as we don't burn them down, cut them down, and remember to plant them. Uh, forests are important. Um, and especially uh, urban, urban trees towards the bottom with a focus on neighborhoods that uh, negatively impacted from a lack of tree equity. You've probably seen the studies, uh, cities with not many trees are a lot hotter, unpleasant, less healthy. Uh, building electrification and uh, efficiency. Uh, I'll read this. We educate the public and elected officials on the importance of electrification and efficiency and how they can accelerate the transition to clean energy buildings with attention to supporting low and middle income households in that transition. Basically, uh, uh, one of the key drivers of emissions, the key driver is burning things. And to the extent that uh, uh, we can replace burning things with electricity and then, uh, and then produce the electricity by not burning things, solar, wind, hydro, uh, the other methods uh, that you produce electricity without burning things reduces, the, reduces emissions. So, um, so electricity is a key tra transitioning from burning things for primary energy to electrification. I, I threw this slide in because I love it. It's a little fuzzy, but this is a comparison between a 370 horsepower electric motor on the left. So you see that little dolly there with that little electric motor. That's a 370 horsepower electric motor. And on the right is a 370 horsepower gasoline engine not exactly a thing of beauty. Uh, <laughs> hoses, fluids, pipes, sparks, fires, smokes, thousand moving parts. Uh, 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 and, and you see the cleanliness of, a, of an electric motor, essentially one moving part, the, the rotor. Um, much more efficient. There's just a, a complete uh, uh, economic incentive and uh, many incentives is to, to uh, to migrate from, from burning things, especially point source burnings like engines to electric, electric motors. 
uh, and permitting reform, you know, this isn't may not sound as sexy as some of the others. Uh, uh, we work to increase America's capacity to transmit clean energy and speed up the approval of clean energy projects while preserving communities' ability to give input. Solar wind tends to be in out, out areas, rural areas, um, uh, where the electricity is needed is along the coasts, urban centers. So uh, the, the, the key ingredient is the transmission, transmission lines, moving the power from where it's produced into the cities. It takes a long time to get these uh, approved, uh, sometimes a decade. So CCL is working with a number of other organizations. Many Republicans are on board with this, uh, uh, building out um, electric infrastructure, especially transmission. There, there are right now wind uh, and solar, uh, there's a queue of wind and solar projects that are just waiting to, for the permission to connect to the grid. There's no grid on ramp for their, for their power. This is a, a key pacing item uh, in, in the transition to electricity, clean, clean generate electricity. Okay, those are our five uh, policies. Let me see how we're doing on time. Okay, I'm gonna move quickly from here. Okay, engage citizens' best practices. Uh, CCL really prides itself not only on climate, but on uh, um, creating a space for, for engaged active citizens. I'm just gonna go through these. We're focused on a big solution, uh, relationship driven. We build relationships, nonpartisan. We're approachable, optimistic, friendly, easy to talk to, effective. I can't see that. Uh, we're effective. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, I'll just say here, here, here's a story I, I'd like to tell, and I'll end with this, I think that, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, we go into, we meet, and quite often we're meeting with congressional staff. And I'll just say a favorite one for me was, we went in, the congressperson couldn't meet us, they're, they're often busy. So we're talking to the staff, and what, the first thing we do is we'll thank them for um, uh, something that the congressperson has done. And in this case, it was child trafficking. You know, how's that not, you know, and we just said, you know, we're just proud of his work on trial, child trafficking, what, what a great thing. And from behind the cubicle, a voice comes up. Uh, um, I am proud about that. And sure enough, the congressperson comes out, spent the next 45 minutes with us. He was off doing paperwork. I can't be busy meeting these people, just another, you know, one meeting after another. But just by, just by uh, appreciating work that they have done, made a connection and I can tell you, I actually, I shouldn't say this, I prefer going into Republican meetings often over Democrat, very cordial. They like meeting with us. Often they're on the receiving end of people are shaking their fist at them or something. And we go in very clean, polite, we're well-dressed. And um, um, it's, it's so climate, but also citizen activism, citizen activism uh, in a polite, respectful way. Um, if you watch politics on TV, it's mud wrestling. I mean, admit it. It's it's not it's it's not pretty. And you go back to Washington. There's a lot of young people. It's just a it's just up it's just an upper to go back and and really get in the offices with these people and engage in a cordial conversation. They're completely capable off camera of doing it. We're capable. Uh, just it's a it's it's the thing of beauty for me. Uh, uh, we have a lot of action groups in CCL. I just pulled up here the here's the CCL based action teams. Um, faith, faith action teams. A lot of flavors. Uh, if you don't see yours there, you could start one. Um, but there's pl plenty of groups here. Um, uh, and not, this is just faith. We have other, all types of other groups. Uh, X, a petroleum engineer has a group. There, there are over a hundred action groups. You can join and uh, work with people of, of your persuasion. Uh, I just put these in a, a, a bunch of pictures. Um, again, I'll just emphasize, I would not have done any of this with, with, if I had not done it with other people as a team. So you're working with people. It, it makes it fun. Uh, and when you don't know something, somebody else knows it. Uh, and and there, there we go. I'll just leave that there. I've got some links at the end. I'll just leave that there for a minute. Um, uh, with my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me, email or phone anytime. We're really here to be a resource for you guys on climate. If, if you, um, honestly, this, we're, we're here to, 
just be your re, just a resource for you, for you guys. That's that's what I would say. We meet down at Pilgrim Place, Napier Hall. We lately with COVID, we've done some Zoom as as we all have, but we 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 prefer the in person meetings, and uh, we meet monthly, second Saturday of the month, nine a.m. approximately, and uh, so please reach out to us. Q and A. Please. Can you speak to what's going on the next weekend on for Earth Day celebration? Are you going to invite yes. us? Yes, I will. Since you've all memorized this page, I'm going to go to the links here. So link, these are links for CCL and Earth Day events. The first two links are uh, CCL links. You can go there, um, find out about the organization. You can uh, video audio, anything you might want is there. If you can't find it, you can you can ask myself or others. The links on the bottom are just some examples of uh, uh, Earth Day events this month. The one we're highlighting is this first one. It's called. Um, let's see if let's see if it'll go out. Let's see if it'll go. Okay, I hope people online are seeing this. Uh, anyway, it's it's, uh, it's 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 it goes across four cities. You may recall this. They've done it a few times. Took a break during COVID. They're back at it. Thousands of people show up, families, kids in wagons, a lot of people. Uh, it's a great event. We're going to have a table there. Um, it, it's just, just a great event. So that's in Claremont. It follows Arrow, starts in San Diego, follows Arrow Highway. Uh, Bermuda. Oh, Bermuda? Did you have any Bermuda? Well, we're. Right. So we're the eastern end. It also goes to Pomona, Laverne, San Dimas, and people, bikers, runners might do the whole length, but we're going to be tabling here. Can I just make a quick announcement? Yes, please. Penelope, please. Can you make it so that the oh, yes. Okay. yes, 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 yes. We get to wear t shirts. <laughs> Hi, I'm Penelope Mann. I'm part of CCL also, and uh, we are going to be lobbying, I mean, uh, tabling next Sunday um, at the Golden State. How's it called? The Golden, Golden Streets. Streets. Golden Streets, Golden Streets, because it's all closed off to traffic. And so bicycles can come and uh, people in wheelchairs and walkers. And so um, our table will be um, on First Street between Indian Hill and College. And you can sign up today that you would like to just be with us for a couple of hours. And this is where the fun comes in because at our booth, we have like a little pretend uh, thing where you can do a selfie and there's a little frame around it that says climate activist or climate hero. And if you, you know, you just take a little selfie and send it off to someone. You can write a postcard, a very, in fact, you can do that today. There are postcards here, just write it to your congressperson, please be aware of, of climate change, you know, keep it up in their, in their, in their brains and in their minds. Um, and so there are other little fun ways to engage the, the public when they come by our table. And plus, you know, Margaret Davis is here, Julie Starrett, Sue Brown, Rob Brown, myself, um, and Karen <laughs> Carpenter. Um, have all been friends in CCL. And who do, who else? Have, who'd I miss? Maggie. Okay, Maggie. <laughs> so, um, it, you know, it's a, it's a fun group to join. And a wonderful way to do it would be to sign up for two hours this Sunday, next, next, for next coming Sunday, and uh, just come down and, and be at the table with us, and we'll welcome you and put you to work. So please sign up over here with me as you leave. Thank you. Yes, yes. So as Penelope says, the most fun you'll have is if you actually sign up and, and, and stand there. But, but otherwise, please visit the table if you, uh, and just loiter near the table. See, see, how, see how it's done. Um, uh, see how much fun the people who signed up are having. You can sign up on the spot. You don't even need to sign up now. You can just, you can just show up. But, but, but to Penelope, please sign up. Forget what I said, S sign up. 
So that's so that's that. Uh, let me see if I can get back to where I was. There's several other links in the presentation. Uh, let's see, getting here worked. Let's see if getting back works as easily. Yes. Well, another question. This is the event. And any other questions about climate change itself? I went light on that. Um, you, you know, uh, again, there's plenty of resources online. Uh, the focus of this presentation is, um, I can bring up an, another, uh, let's see if I can see that. He showed me how he had it set up beforehand. I, I'll, I'll just say it this way. There, there are, people have heard of the, uh, of the uh, NRA. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty forceful uh, lobbying group, wouldn't you think? They have about 3 million members. Uh, in the United States, there are about 100 million people who have self-identified as alarmed about the climate. About 30% of the country is alarmed. Uh, 100 million people alarmed about the climate, 3 million people alarmed about, or, or they're not even alarmed, they're just members, they're duck hunters, they're good people, they're just members of the NRA for whatever their reason is. But they carry, they, they punch above their 3 million count weight compared to the number of people uh, who are concerned about the climate uh, and are not as well connected to, to, you know, they may not be single issue people. Sometimes NRA people uh, may have a short list of issues. I don't know. They're they're active and they, they join. And the climate people are are not as active. Uh, so our, what we're trying to do is grow from our two hundred thousand pitiable two hundred thousand people up to if we could hit three million uh, climate activists. So we're out there trying to uh, uh, chase the NRA and have as big an impact as they are having. That would be a, a would be a worthy goal. And I think the the issue is as worthy as their their issues. Uh, please. Yes. So if you're local, we, we cover four members of Congress out of, out of our little district. Now we share two of them. Um, we, uh, Judy Chu is the, our local member of Congress. And of course, both state senators, we, we all have them in common. But Judy Chu, we work with her. She is, she has, uh, we have had great luck with her. And this shows the level of persistence. We visited her for, I'm sure, a decade, non-committal, non-committal, non-committal. And when the first climate bill came up uh, that we were supporting, she was one of the first co-sponsors, maybe the first co-sponsor of that bill. Uh, and she she did not, she played it close to the chest. She didn't, she didn't uh, tip her hand, especially. Uh, she was, wasn't antagonistic. So, so she's been a great supporter. She's our local member of Congress. Uh, Norma Torres. She's down in Pomona, uh, Chino, those areas. We, we work with her, uh, Democratic. She's, she's not antagonistic, but she's not as on board, although I did give a talk that she sponsored a talk and invited us to speak, the American Lung Association. I didn't even get around to the health effects of uh, climate change, pretty, pr pretty stiff. Uh, my, son works, my son and his wife are respiratory therapists. We live in Southern California. We don't we got a little rain this year, but uh, mostly uh, we get smog. And, um, you know, that might be our issue. And um, he worked at the children's hospital, asthma. You know, a lot of people, many people die prematurely or, or just live uh, diminished lives uh, due, due to burn, burning stuff. Uh, yes, please. I have a question yeah. Tax. Yes, so, yes. Yes. Uh, it can get complicated. Well, but, can you repeat the question? Yeah, yes, please, please. This is a question about the carbon tax and, and uh, uh, our questioner, and your name was? Oh. Helen has asked uh, what that would cover. Here's the basic principle. It would be assigned at the, at the production side of production. So at the, at the wellhead, uh, if you're, if you're uh, pulling liquids and, and gases out of the ground, it would be a, a tax, would be, a fee would be assigned there. If you have a coal mine, it would be assigned there. So it would be assigned at the first, as it's first brought into the supply chain, the, the fee would be assigned there. So I don't want to get into how it's calculated, but per million BTUs, however they, however they calculate it, the details will be worked out in the bill, but it would be assigned there. 
the presumption is that much of that would just be added to the price and passed on to consumers. So if I'll, I'll just say it this way, let's say your, your, your fee for carbon fuels was $100 a month, just to keep it easy, that fee would be collected, that 100 would then not be retained by the government, it would be put into a, a, a trust fund, delivered out, here's the vision, monthly checks, Canada does this right now, British Columbia has a carbon fee and dividend plan, they mine a lot of uh, tar sands and whatnot up in Alberta, Alberta, and they collect the money. It's distributed out to the citizens in equal measure. So, so let's say your bill was 100, and, and let's say you, you, let's say the average bill was 100. If, if most people are net positive, it turns out there are super users of, of, of fuels. They're gonna, they've got big house, you know, six flat screen TVs, air conditioning, jacuzzis, whatever they've got, and they, 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 they would, they would pay more as the fee, they would pay more of that fee, but they're still getting the same 100 back. So let's say they pay 200 and they get 100 back. Most people would be net positive initially and everyone would be incentivized to the less carbon I, uh, the less carbon intense product I purchase, the, the, I get that same 100 back, but now I only pay an, an extra 80, an extra 70, an extra 60. And uh, one of the key things is the fee increases each year, there's a, a, an escalation clause each year, again, with the idea to disincentivizes companies also to have their product be uh, less carbon intensive. Right now, they don't care. They can pump carbon out the, the stack free for nothing, cost them nothing to, to do that. This now would cost them something. So immediately they, they could, uh, would be incentivized to reduce the carbon intensity of their product. Did, did that help? That, that is fine, but very well. Oh, okay, great. Th thank you, thank you. Please. If you click on the chat, I'll be on the top. Oh, that's just me saying that people can ask her. Oh, we're asking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And, 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 and what we will do is, Julie, do you, and I have, uh, Julie has been assisting me. Do you see any, uh, so hello people, people uh, on the online universe. Um, we see your questions coming in. Julie, do you see? There's, there's the only comment is me telling them they can put their questions out. Okay. Uh, uh, please uh, online uh, feel free to enter a question and if you enter enter a question that we don't get to or uh, I don't know the answer to we we will get back to you uh, especially if you put contact information in that that would help please well, you said that it missed by one vote getting passed in where the name Senator Manchin comes to mind okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, he, he just felt that um, uh, he just felt that uh, that was politically untenable to, to take that back to West Virginia. And, and for, for whatever, uh, you, you, I think you all remember there was a long eh, multi-year dance with uh, Senator Manchin. And uh, let me say he, he came through in the end um, and he pushed for there was a, a major methane uh, thing that was a, a component amendment that was added to the bill, very uh, important. We didn't get around to talking about methane, but it's quite important. And he actually, I just heard this morning, I listened to a talk uh, by, let me say many faith communities are involved. When I first went back to Washington and I met some people yesterday at a concert here in the church, the Interfaith Power and Light group. This is a great group, the Interfaith, you know, uh, multiple faiths, they they come back and they they were they were right alongside with us uh, also when we were lobbying it, it was amazing, um, but I heard a talk this morning by the Evangelical Environmental Evangelical Network, great talk uh, and the fellow he worked with Senator Manchin and um, and uh, he had a lot of praise for Senator Manchin so um, and specifically on this methane bill Senator Manchin uh, disregarded his advisors and said no I think that's a good idea companies should have to account for if they if they're sloppy about leaking methane uh well that's sloppiness is is you know we, we should regulate sloppiness so he he added that in so that's that was the vote that kept it from coming in however uh we've been at it a long time and it could well uh, it, it's going to come back please rather simple question what is people what is tabling? That's a great question. So tab uh, the question is, what is tabling? Uh, it's, a, it's a short form. We set up a table at events. This is an event. 
we've set up a table. You're at a tabling event. The, tab the tables for people online, we've set up a table and it's a table about tabling where you can, uh, you can come to this table and sign up for our tabling event for Earth Day next weekend. We set up a table with, um, with a very attention grabbing, um, I've got some here, but I, I, won't, I don't have time to read up. But we set up uh, displays that attract people's attention. They come over, we have little games for the children. And while the children are uh, playing the games, we're working their parents. You know, so it's a, it's a fun, uh, we, may we give them M&Ms, uh, whatever we do. Uh, not anymore, that's right, not anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, healthy food. Um, so uh, that's so tabling and we're outreaching to people. It turns out that many people don't talk about the climate. They don't hear anybody talk about it. Uh, and, and one of the, Catherine Hayhoe said, just go up to people and go, hey, just uh, have you ever heard anything about the climate or what do you think about this climate change thing? People just, just, to, just to go to people and just say, hey, you weren't interested in climate change, were you? The simplest possible engagement with people um, but leading them to taking an action. Hey, here's a postcard to your congressperson. You fill it out and we'll send it. We'll send it. Posted. We got the postage on it right here, like that. So tabling is a uh, meant to draw people into the issue and inspire them to act. Yes, it's a grassroots outreach. Exactly right. Please, Susan. Oh, five minutes. Excellent. Excellent. Please. Um, does your group still work with Pete Aguilar or is he out of our district now? We're, he's not my congressman anymore. Yes, the question is, do we still work with Pete Aguilar? And I, uh, I'm sure I interrupted myself when I said we have four Congress people we work with. Uh, I cover Judy Chu and Norma Torres. We, uh, we share Judy Chu with Pasadena. Um, Norma Torres, we, we have her all to ourselves. Pete Aguilar, we share our group. We actually splintered off from the Pasadena group to here years ago. Uh, and the Redlands group splintered off from us. They now mostly have Pete Aguilar, but we share Pete Aguilar. You, you may notice that the districts have been, they've been redistricting. So some of the people in our group that used to be with Pete Aguilar, our, myself, uh, who ourselves used to have Pete, uh, so Pete Aguilar, we still work with Pete, but, but uh, Redlands takes the lead. And then we also work with Grace Napolitano. We have her uniquely. She's uh, San Dimas, Laverne. Um, anyone in, who has Grace Napolitano for their representative, please see us. We, we have openings, many openings in Grace Napolitano's uh, uh, team. Thank you. And I'll just add that we're, we're, we're spinning up a California, in, in my last minutes, uh, we're renewing our effort uh, for in California lobbying. Uh, it turns out California uh, punches way above its weight. We're something like the third or fourth economy in the world, the largest economy in the world. No joke, we are a major environmental player, huge amount of solar, huge amount of wind, Good. A lot of fossil fuels we, we still use, uh, but we have a more or less super majority in, in, the, in the legislature. We have, tend to have friendly, uh, climate friendly governors. A lot gets done. And if you're not aware, many states draft in, if you're familiar with that, draft in behind California. So if we pass a law, say, around auto emissions, there's roughly 14 states that just if we'll, but if we'll pay for all the, the consultants and we'll, we'll draw up the legislation and get the heavy lifting done, other states simply simply uh, uh, adopt what, what California passes, which, is, um, which gives us a very outsized impact. And it, close to a third of the auto market it, uh, is under California rules. And the auto manufacturers say, while they occasionally sue California, they, they tend to lose. And so then they just come in behind. So rather than car companies having to build three different types of cars, they just basically adopt the, the California standard. So if California passes something, it can run the, the, the table across the country. We are spinning up a California uh, lobbying effort. If you say okay. some of the states, shall we not want to be grateful to? What states are like that? Well, the, the nearby states, the Northwest states, I don't know all 14. I wouldn't embarrass myself, but um, 
uh, a number of major states, but I think even New York, some of the New England states, uh, you know, major states, uh, roughly a third of the auto market. So these are not small states, probably not Texas, but, but many other states. Okay, I think uh, that, that might be our, our cue to wrap up. Uh, I hear the heavenly music has uh, wafting in. So thank you very much for coming.